Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth installment. That's right, our number our fourth episode of Insecurity. On today's show, we want to talk about what happens when you get a new phone. I just got the Nexus 5, and I want to ask Tom here, what can we do to secure our phone? Or what, sh what are the best practices? Not necessarily the best way to do it, but what are the best practices? So we're joined by Tom. Tom, say hi. Hey, what's up? And let's let's go through what you first get the phone, you take it out of the package. What should we look for in a phone? Like, what should we look for in the first steps? The the first step, honestly, is when you're choosing a phone, choose a device manufacturer that's got a really a really proven track record, someone that'll keep your Android up to date. And honestly, that's the hardest thing to find. It's why I buy Nexus most of the time. The biggest security risk are is honestly unpatched vulnerabilities. And if you buy, let's say you buy a Huawei something phone from China and it comes with Android 2.3, it comes with Gingerbread, and Gingerbread, you know, 2.1 comes out, 2.2, or uh, 2.3.1, 2.3.2 .2 comes out to patch security vulnerabilities, but you don't get that update, you're still vulnerable to that. And that's honestly probably your biggest vector of attack. Well, we have that, and and I see new phones nowadays, and we're, we're specifically talking about Android, but iOS is the same idea. It, and what we see is that these new cheap phones are still rolling with gingerbread, and people say, well, what's the difference? Like, who really cares? And the answer is, it matters, because you want, if you have nothing else, you want the security updates. You may not care about the eye candy and the skins and all that, but just the security updates to keep you safe is something that's super important. There was a, um, there's actually a huge talk um, at a security conference I went to, where this ethical hacker did a giant study on Android phones, and the majority of phones out there are sold out of date already, um, and it presents like an actual exploitable device sitting in your pocket, connected to a microphone, a camera, a GPS, connected to you and your person and everything you hold dear. And you're carrying around something that's basically security Swiss cheese. Well, our our good friend Michael DeGusta years ago posted a link of uh, posted an infographic on what phones at this current moment were were outdated and how many out OS out how outdated was it compared to let's say an Apple iPhone and and you would find out. Look, just now, I just got my Nexus 5. Every single phone right now, unless you have a Nexus 5, is outdated. At least one version of Android. So your Nexus 4, which presumably is going to get KitKat in, I don't know, a couple days, mm -hmm. but everything else, the HTC One, the S4, the S3, the Note 3, those are all outdated, and I don't even think they have 4.3 yet. So. Yeah, and what's nice about Android and, and Google in general is... Even for the older version, so even after Eclair launched, even after 4.0, um, Gingerbread, or not Eclair, um, 4.0. For, uh, for uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. Yeah, when, so Ice Cream Sandwich launched, uh, launched and um, Google still put out security updates for 2.3. Every time a new vulnerability was found, they said, hey, guys, manufacturers, everyone, there's a security bug. Here's your update. Go ahead and put it, pull it down. Do uh, an over-there update. Everyone will be happy. And no one did it. And honestly, it's, it's as much the fault of the device manufacturer as it is the carrier. Uh, they're both to blame because no, neither of them make a big deal about security updates. So you need to either, A, demand a phone that gets security updates, preferably straight from Google, straight from the horse's mouth. So get a Nexus phone. It'll always be up to date within 18 months. Um, or buy the phone you want and put a well-known ROM on it. Put Bugless Beasts, put Cyanogen, do one of the bigger ROM manufacturers because they tend to be on the bleeding edge of security updates, even faster than the Nexus in some cases. Well, I want to say we're talking about the 18 months. My, I had an original Droid X. Not the original Droid, but the Droid X, which was the sweetheart of phones from Verizon. And it surprisingly, about a month and a half ago, got a security update on Gingerbread. Wow. And it was just, it, it was more of a, I mean, in my mind, to screw you to say, hey, we're still here, but <laughs> it's two and a half years old, but your Galaxy Nexus on Verizon can't get 
4.3 or 4. I don't even think it has 4.2 yet. I don't think so. Because oh, uh, we're doing more more rigorous testing, which is which is a problem. And one of the biggest things we were scared about was the Google Play Edition phones. When were they getting their updates? And it seems like they're at least they're at least within a reasonable amount of time for an update. So yeah. far, it's it would be like if. Um... Buying a phone is like if you bought your computer straight from Dell, and Dell was responsible for pushing Windows updates. That sounds like a really bad deal, because Dell might just say, eh, they're not really selling that well. We had the new model like six months ago, and we're going to stop updating the thing, and leaving you with an unpatched operating system. Same exact thing. Well, I think the other problem is, is because we understand, well, the developers know that the updates are not going to come out, so they're going, they're they're making their apps to work with whatever the majority version of Android is. So we're looking at uh, we're looking at apps that are supporting Gingerbread. If they all of a sudden stopped and said we are going we are going KitKat only, they're going to lose market share. But at least people are going to say, hey, I want that newest Angry Bird. I want that newest. Uh, in-app purchase for Temple Run. Uh, if the big manufacturers like EA went there, I have a feeling people are going to start demanding it. Yeah, and it's it's really up to the developers to kind of push that forward. The consumers should demand it, but developers can help that push. And the, and the other thing is that there's not enough fanfare. So they talk about so so the the nerds talk about oh Android released a new ice cream uh, dessert themed operating system. But we really can't. They don't really go about this crazy thing. But when Apple gets in front of the stage at WWDC and says iOS seven, everyone jumps. When are we getting it? Everyone's trying to get the the beta on it. They're trying to push it out. And whatever Apple did, they strong armed the carriers into pushing pushing it all out so you can on day one get it and that's why they have a 95% adoption rate and and they're 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 I don't want to say they're more secure but everyone's on the latest and greatest it's uh, so it's demonstrably less secure than android believe it or not the iphone is actually a less secure platform than android because it's not open source there for a while um, a period of about 3 or 4 weeks uh, after the DEF CON presentation, there was a bug in iOS. I believe it was iOS 5, if I'm not mistaken. The SMS bug, right? Exactly. Where you could hack, where you could totally own someone's phone by sending a null character through SMS. And Android was not uh, Android was not susceptible to this hack? No. It's had its own versions of it in the past, but when it was found, it was quickly squashed in the Android Open Source Project. And the problem that we get is that when we hear about this, oh, there's a security exploit. The Nexus people will get an update within a week or so. But the other people, like you said before, you have to wait months for TouchWiz to come out or for HTC Sense to update or Ninja Blur on Motorola phones. And months is putting it good. That's putting oh, yeah. it lightly. Well, let's give props to HTC. They did say that their HTC One will see the KitKat update within, quote-unquote, quote within 90 days. Kudos so, to them. I mean, not to say that 90, day, 90 days is an eternity with security exploits, but you know what? 90 days is better than nothing. Yeah. The next thing I want to focus on is that we need to get the people to upgrade. And, and we're not the, the best use case, but most people hate an upgrade change unless it's something so great. And you can't count out the Apple people. iOS 7, we're hearing a lot of terrible things. I mean, mm -hmm. I have an iPad too. I don't like iOS 7. My wife, who likes, who's not bleeding edge like I am, but she's more subdued. She doesn't like it. And a lot of people are saying, "I don't get it." And it may be, and and the Android people are saying, "What's not to get? It makes perfect sense. It just looks a little. Just get an icon pack and make it the old way." Yeah, I, I actually I've heard a lot of. Um contention over iOS 7. It's it's not well received. It's kind of the redheaded stepchild of the iPhone right now. Well, we'll give it I mean, you give it 6 months and you see all the cool the quote unquote cool things it can do and then mm -hmm. we'll go from there. It's just, it's it's going to it's the ice cream sandwich of the jelly bean. I, I guess that's the right way to put it. Right. Ice cream sandwich is a little rough around or it's the Vista to Windows 7 or anything like that. So yeah. so so I got this. I've decided now. 
I got the Bleeding Edge, Edge Nexus phone, which, by the way, I highly recommend. If you're looking for a new phone for $349, you are getting basically an S4 quality like device even though like the S4 is three or four months old at this point but you were getting it off contract it's three hundred and fifty dollars for half and, the price yeah for half the price you can buy two of them and you can just buy one every year for the same price now <laughs> and if you're talking about contracts and everything else there you go and it's it's right there it's a world phone you don't have to you get the updates you don't have to worry about anything that takes uh, GSM or LTE sim unless you're Verizon will work and there's a lot of good deals it's making the and I've been a big advocate on this on the other podcast about prepaid and sir and MVNOs and lowering the price of data so that's my thing okay so I got this now the first question is do you unlock the phone for me, um, honestly, if you're going to run the stock Nexus software, no, no. If you're going to run the stock Nexus software, if you don't care about rooting the phone, if you don't care about hacking around with Android or ROMs, leave it locked. You don't need to, to go unlock the bootloader, um, you know, because you're not going to do anything with it. So it's... I wouldn't call it, it's a security vector, but it's not major because someone has to steal your phone for a significant amount of time to do anything truly malicious. Um, but it, it's an easier opportunity if you have it unlocked and you're not doing anything with it. Do you say the same thing for the iOS devices as well? If you don't, if you don't need to jailbreak it, just leave it alone? Exactly, yeah. If you have no reason to go do something, to go clearly break in-place security protocol, don't do it. Um, that said, there are clear benefits to rooting a phone and changing the operating system and breaking the security of your carrier if your carrier has left you with lots and lots of security holes. So there's two. So here's the problem with unlocking, and we understand why, but when you unlock a phone, like uh, in our case, the Nexus 4, the Galaxy Nexus, Nexus 5, it wipes out everything. You start fresh. So if you're, if you're rolling around, you're playing with your phone six months, you get everything perfect, and then all of a sudden you, you, you want to start tinkering, the first thing you have to do is unlock, and it erases everything. And the, right. the and the reason for that is so if somebody if somebody steals your phone and wants to do some some damage to it, they're going to have to start fresh. So I understand why they do it, but just to be aware that if you're going to start, it's gonna it's gonna do all that. So you're going to want to run a backup. backups, backups, backups. Well, that's a whole other show, but <laughs> a few other shows. But then the other question is, and the reason most people want to unlock is not necessarily put a different operating system on, but to gain access to apps that that are actually are very good, like a backup app, like Titanium Backup, or or you want to be able to tether, which I believe is my right as a as a consumer, but the carriers say no, and and Google obliges and doesn't allow that natively when you buy the phone from a carrier. So if you want to do any of those th things, you do need to unlock and you do need to root your phone. Right. So, And, and rooting comes with its own set of kind of weird things around it. Um, by rooting the phone, you are deliberately breaking Android sandboxing. When you install an Android app, it gets put in a uh, basically a sandbox, its own little play Thing, and it can move anywhere inside of its little box, and every app gets its own little box, so it's all separated from each other, and they can't interfere, and this guy can't steal data from this guy unless there's an API call built in to specifically allow that kind of data stealing. Um, it makes Android apps very, very secure, and it's not foolproof. Things have broken out of the sandbox before, but for the most part, it's really good. When you root a, a phone, when you say this application has root permissions, that app can do anything. That app can turn on your microphone, listen to you, send it to the NSA, and then email your boss porn. It can do all of that whenever it wants, because it's got root permissions. On If you're running a mod, and you're rooting a mod that's got it built in, most of them have got a really nice set of super user applications, which is when something requests root, it'll come to you and say, hey, give you this message, says, hey, this application wants root, you probably shouldn't do this for an app you don't ultimately trust, do you want to allow this or no? And in some of the newer phones, you can actually set up a whitelist and a blacklist of, hey, 
this thing wants root, it should never have it, and it will never get root. Your phone's operating system will make sure it stays in its sandbox. Or if you need something like Titanium Backup or any other really heavy application that needs all the system resources, like ROM Manager, something that can do major damage or major good to your phone, you can say, yeah, that thing can always get root whenever it wants. And, well, so that's, that's what I do. See, I don't want to actually run rooted because I don't want to have to worry about this by accident that something happens. And I give my phone, which I know is a bad thing, to my nephews who want to play with, who want to play Temple Run or whatever little game I have. But who knows what they're touching on the side. And, again, I know that that's wrong, but I don't need them accidentally giving root permissions to stuff. And, and... And you have to worry about that. So, and by the way, for all you iOS people, don't think you're immune. The default password, if you uh, jailbreak your phone, is Alpine. So, somebody knowing that could send, could could build in a back door when you're downloading an app that knows that password, and presumably you haven't changed it, and now they have full permission to use your phone. That was a huge, huge issue when the jailbreaks first hit, because people would turn on SSH as one of the steps in one of the early jailbreaks. And then you've got you've basically got this computer live on the internet with a default SSH password. So what that means is anyone who wants to can use a default password to control your phone and do anything they want with it. Huge, huge problem. It actually bricked a lot of phones. Well, when I heard that, obviously you change it. But mm -hmm. so now now we talked about that. Are there any specific so you have the phone? I put a passcode lock on it. Obviously, we all recommend that everyone should. In fact, Apple decided to use their Touch ID as their uh, second factor, as a first factor of authentication. But are there? I guess our recommendation is put anything. Anything is better than nothing. Yeah. So you've you've got tiers. I would say if you're using like a full keyboard password, you're using letters, numbers, special characters. You're you're god tier. You're god tier protection on your phone. Now, granted, somebody can steal the phone, they can suck all the data off unless you encrypt it, which we'll get to later. But you've got God tier when you're doing the full keyboard password. And then you've got, you know, the pin with the numeric password. That's pretty good. That's really good security. And then you've got, you know, the swipe thing, the pattern password, and that's okay. I mean you can there have been studies that show that you can read smudges and it's decently accurate to get it back. And then no lock code and that you're kinda asking for trouble. The, the problem is, is that if you want to use some of the cool, uh, not I don't want to say dash clock, but the widgets on the home screen, you want mm -hmm. that's if you want to say OK Google to turn on your phone, if it's locked, it's not going to do it, and so you're you're losing that. And look, hey, it's annoying. It really is. But but and it goes back to the point, your phone. 15 years ago made phone calls. Now it's connected to Google, it's connected to everything that you hold near and dear and you have to worry about what happens if this gets out. This is more than just your wallet. This can access this can get all that information and you really have to think about securing it. And just putting anything, putting putting a putting a pin number on that's not 1234 is 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 just is is just a no-brainer. Just do that. Yeah, and I, I, this would be the perfect time to say, if you are putting on Lookout Security or AVG or Antivirus 2012 or any of these other applications that promise to secure your phone and destroy Android viruses, they're all a sham. They're all a sham. The Android apps are sandboxed anyway. The, the apps don't do anything. They literally... The only thing the Lookout app and AVG do is they've got a blacklist of apps that are clearly malicious because Google has already blacklisted them from the Play Store. You shouldn't need these things. They're a sham and they're costing you money. Stop it. You don't need that. You need this, and then you need to not install random APKs from the Internet. Install it from Google Play, and you should be fine. And also, don't install don't install things that are known to be bad. If right. Don't say, somebody says, hey, check out this app. 
do your work. Read about it. Read the reviews. It goes back to the other thing. You don't need to run a virus scan if you're intelligent and you can read past the shine the shininess of the website or what they want you to do. Now, I did have Lookout for a long time, and I, and on my new phone, it's definitely not going on because Lookout had one feature that I liked. It found your phone if you miss if you misplaced mm. it, and that was a big deal because that's the last thing you want to do is is you lose your phone and it had the, the advanced features that you paid for remote lock but Google saw that that was a big deal and now they integrate it you have Android uh, device manager that will do all of that for you for every Android phone oh now that goes back to gingerbread I think yes yes okay so at least they had the foresight to see that but that's one of the things that Google should have maybe had the line and say you know what we need this to be Android 4.0. But again, they want they're trying to get everyone on board. They're trying to stop the carriers by doing it their way and and look, it's great. Even if you didn't put a passcode on, you lose your phone, you go to the website, you can actually put a passcode on. But our recommendation is play with it first now before you need it. Right. And uh, which brings me to my next point. So if somebody gets your phone and even if it's locked, what if they boot it up into a recovery? What if they suck all the data off in a backup? I mean, they can still get my stuff, right? Yes, they can. And it happens with laptops all the time. You've seen the news stories of somebody works for some big government agency or some big insurance contractor. They get their laptop stolen out of their car, and all of a sudden, oh, my God, 10,000 social security numbers, phone numbers, and addresses are out in the wild somewhere in the hands of some hacker, and he's selling them to everyone who wants it. How can you prevent this? We'll tell you tonight at 6. I'll tell you tonight right now. So, it's called full disk encryption, and it's fantastic. And it's built into your Android phones from everything, I believe, 4.0 and up. You go to your settings, you go to security, and uh, you've got a little thing here that says encrypt phone. If you hit that, make sure it's plugged in. It'll tell you to have a full battery. And it'll sit there for about an hour and churn through. Every time you turn on this phone, you have to put in your password. Whatever password you've got in your lock screen, you've got to put that in or else the phone will not boot. If somebody steals your phone, this they get hardware. All of your data is a scrambled mess, and they can't get any of it back. Thing of beauty. And again, w- with security comes inconvenience. Every time you you turn the display on, which for some people is hundreds of times a day, you got to put the password in. Right. And you can't oh and by the way you can't revert it. So if all of a sudden you want to turn you can't just turn off encryption. You have to it does a complete reset of your phone. Yes, it it will lock itself in place and you cannot take off the encryption. So you have what, to totally wipe it to get rid of it. So now my question is, let's say you have encryption on. I haven't played with this. And you do a full titanium backup where you you send it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Is it is that encrypted? No, no. The encryption okay. layer like your phone, you've got a boot layer where your phone loads major operating system files, and then you've got your system stuff, which is not encrypted, and then you've got your user data. Titanium backup runs in this space, which is unencrypted during use, which is encrypted, but it's got a key in memory that it can access and write things in use. So titanium backup, if you take a full backup of that, you don't put a password on it, you don't encrypt the backup, which titanium will do, and you give it to your fa- your neighborhood hacker, he will find all of your data. You are basically taking encrypted data and putting it somewhere else that's not secured. So now, so the, so the answer is... Well, so the answer is if you're running titanium backup or you're doing any backup, make sure you encrypt that. Yes, and there is options. It tells you to. It actually says, hey, you should probably encrypt these backups before you store them. You should probably put a password in, and that's a good thing. You should do that. And again, for another show on how to encrypt backups, but same thing with your iOS device. Uh, iTunes does a backup. You want to encrypt it. Look, the simple the simple answer is... If it's inconvenient for you, it's going to be inconvenient for the for the robbers. If they find two phones, one with information and one where you have to put a passcode, they're not going to they're going to take your phone and they're going to probably wipe it and sell it. But at least your data is safe. Because remember, if you if 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 they're trying to break in and they have your phone, they can send password resets right to the phone, and you have to worry about the weakest link. So if they're if if they're trying to fish you and they have your phone, they have it. 
And that's what we're trying to protect everyone from. Put some sort of encryption on your phone. Put the passcode, put put even even the swipe, anything you can do. You can't do encryption with a swipe. I know, that was the problem. You have <laughs> to put the pin. Can you do the pin code? You can do a pin code. It's recommended to do a password, but I use a pin code. Yeah, I mean, and don't make your password one two three four. Yes, that's a bad thing. So, so, and yes, it's it's it, we keep on going back to it's annoying, but but you got to do it. And we we talked about we haven't talked about this yet, but Motorola with their Moto X did that that twenty dollars skip accessory. So as long as you're within a Bluetooth range, it will automatically unlock your phone, which isn't great, but. The pre the presumption is you have your phone if it's within twenty feet of you. So. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing, and people have experimented with that before. I don't know the security specifics on it. On you know, can this be spoofed in any way? Because you know, I mean, I would like some sort of NFC device, just like that Motorola Skip, that if it attaches to me, I touch the phone to whatever that is, to my pocket or wherever it mm -hmm. is. And it would unlock it, which means I really I don't need a fingerprint, but I really can put a really crazy long uh, passphrase in, and I can do it there. Again, it jeopardizes some security, but if I'm not the two two you have to be near it. So yeah, or better yet, yeah. just public key, private key encryption. You just hold your phone near it; it does a, a GPG function and it unlocks your phone. So again, I should patent that. There you go. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> Everyone knows. Every all zero viewers. I hereby make this public domain. Yeah. So, anything else before we wrap up? I think that's about it. So, you get a new phone? Please, please, please listen to this. Please share this podcast with with your mother, your grandmother, the people in your life that you do care about, who've gone through losing their phone, losing their data, who have been fished. Let them listen to it. Look, we're, you're all going to get a new phone. Christmas is coming around. The holidays, you're going to get one next year. If you haven't gotten a smartphone yet, it's coming soon. They're, the carriers are forcing you to get it. Learn. Remember, the data you save could be your own. Yeah. So, so do whatever you can do to be secure. And remember, we understand that it's it's inconvenient, but think about the inconvenience after the fact. So, I'm done. Anybody have anything else? Otherwise, we're done. I think that's it. Okay. Well, everyone have a good night, and we'll see you next week. See you guys. Bye.